Good evening. Welcome all to begin uh, our Lent series. We are thinking as an overall theme about embracing justice. And our Lent talks and discussions will be based on the Archbishop of Canterbury's Lent book, Embracing Justice, written by Isabel Hamley. So each of the themes that we've taken this Lent come from her book. It's a book that is relatively easy to read, so I would recommend it to you, and it has very apt questions at the end of each chapter for you to consider. In a few moments, uh, we'll begin with prayer. Um, Afterwards, then I'll give an overview of um, justice and creation. In my overview, there will be an opportunity for you to discuss some of the questions with each other. Or if you'd prefer just to sit and ponder, then please just sit and ponder. And after our um, thinking and our discussions, then we will hold a moment of quiet before we move into our night prayer compline. So you should all have with you a service sheet that is... Uh, entitled Lent Compline 2022. As we begin our worship together this evening, um, I thought it would be apt to begin with something called breath prayers. So I invite you to sit comfortably with your feet slightly apart, You might like to place your hands on your lap, either facing down or upwards. I know that we're wearing masks, um, but if you can, and it doesn't make you feel too uncomfortable, please do take in a deep breath and then release. And again. And release. And as we do so, we're breathing in the love of God and we're releasing to God the stresses and strains of our world and our day. So I invite you to breathe in once more. and release. In a world that has fault lines and fractures, we stand in the place where we come together, awaiting the birth of what is to come. If you are doubting, welcome. If you are healing, welcome. If you are angry at injustice, welcome. We await a new beginning. One more beginning in a series of starts. Travelling backwards in time to the very first day. If you are afraid, welcome. If you are joyful, welcome. If you are longing to belong, welcome. God's generous rhythm of life, death and resurrection. Moving in and through all things. 
pathways that converge and continue. Each one of us a catalyst for loving action. We are the community of saints. God's breath in us. In a world that has fault lines and fractures. We stand in the place where we come together. Awaiting the birth of what is to come. God breathes in us. When the Lord God made the heavens and the earth, neither wild plants nor grains were growing on the earth. For the Lord God had not yet sent rain to water the earth, and there were no people to cultivate the soil. Instead, springs came up from the ground and watered all the land. Then the Lord God formed the human from the dust of the ground, breathed the breath of life into the human's nostrils and the human being became a living person. We are profoundly dependent on the health of our planet. It is, our, it is in our lungs that we connect to the Earth's great aerial bloodstream. And it is in this way that our atmosphere inspires us. From our first breath to our last, the time-honoured custom of slapping newborns on the bottom to elicit a drawing of breath. And in the holding of a mirror to the lips of the dying, these are the bookmarks of our existence. And it is the atmosphere's oxygen that sparks our inner fire, permitting us to move, eat and reproduce, indeed to live. Clean air is gulped straight from the aerial ocean. Clean air is not just an old-fashioned tonic for human health, it is life itself. And 13.5 kilograms of it are required by every adult, every day of our lives. And so, as we gather, we thank God for the breath of life. Amen. There are many different stories of creation from around the world. The Maori have many different creation stories. The stories that they have tell of how darkness was the long night and the long night became light. Nothingness became something. The earth and sky were separated and nature evolved. In Hinduism, a lotus flower grew from the Lord Vishnu's navel and the Brahma sat on it. Brahma separated the lotus flower into three parts, the heavens, the earth, and the sky. 
And in another Hindu story, life comes from the cracking of an enormous egg, which is the life from which the universe is born. People call the stories of origin religious anthropology. They teach humans about where humanity comes from, who humanity is, and what humans' purpose is. And this evening, we will consider some of the elements of the first three chapters of Genesis. And within each of them, what we are taught about justice through our stories of creation. In Judaism, there are two different creation stories, roughly equivalent to the first two chapters of the book of Genesis. And this is where we find a Hebrew understanding of justice, who we are, who we are meant to be, and who God is. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, God created them. Male and female, God created them. In contrast to the other stories, found in Mesopotamia about the time of the Hebrew stories, the Hebrew stories teach that all human beings are made in the image of God, all of them. Not just the king or the queen or the higher echelons of society, but everyone. There is no value difference in them. And so, in one way, the Bible's challenge to the surrounding nation stories was that no human could have a greater claim to anything than anyone else. Everybody was brought upwards equally to God. And so, right at the beginning of the stories of origin in our scriptures, we have the understanding that every human is made in the image of God, worthy of respect, and their dignity is equal. In her book, Isabel Hamley argues that we cannot speak about justice unless our understanding of justice is anchored in what we believe about God. And so justice can never purely be about money or basic needs. Justice is about human dignity. When we hear that everyone is made in the image of God, to harm the image of God is to harm God, him or herself. So, dignity, based, that we are, based on the fact we're all made in the image of God. The second point that she states is that the creation stories show us that there is difference to be celebrated. Diversity and difference are all part of being made in the image of God. Male and female, yes. But difference does not have to be ranked, she says. Difference does not have to be like the two Ronnie sketch, looking down on someone else. I think you would admit that there is much difference in our world that has been used to justify superiority, 
Just think of South Africa and apartheid. Or just think that despite um, the Bible teaching that we're all made in the image of God, most cultures that have claimed Christianity as their roots have women treated in different ways than men. Religion has been used to claim that wealth and prosperity are a sign of God's blessing on those who deserve it. Just think about the debates about the deserving or undeserving poor found in Victorian England, or slavery in the 18th century. But Isabel argues that difference is a key concept in our creation stories. Difference is important and to be celebrated. And so we have dignity and difference. The third aspect which she draws from the stories in Genesis are interconnection and interdependence. Humans don't appear in our Genesis story until verse 26. So surprise, surprise, we're not the centre of everything. Every part of creation is called good. Beauty of nature, the beauty of animals, Everything is good. Nature creates an obligation for us as humans to respect it because nature and humanity are part of a wider system together. A community that God says is good. And so, dignity, difference, and community. Sharing a life, a God-given life, a life that is blessed, that rests, and is in relationship with God. So two questions for us to consider. If in our stories of origin we are taught that there is dignity for everyone because we are all made in the image of God, how do you honour the image of God in the people you meet day to day? And secondly, If our stories of origin teach us that difference and community is to be celebrated, what parts of your life do you recognise are dependent on others? So two questions. How do you consciously honour the image of God in the people you meet and which parts of your life are dependent on others. A pause to reflect or discuss. And so in Genesis chapters 1 and 2, we hear of dignity being made in the image of God, difference to be celebrated, and community interdependence. And yet we know in chapter 3 of Genesis, the world falls, paradise is lost, and we're invited 
to look at ourselves within this picture also. When the cool evening breezes were blowing, the man and his wife heard the Lord God walking about in the garden. So they hid from the Lord God among the trees. Then the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He replied, I heard you walking in the garden, so I hid. I was afraid because I was naked. Who told you that you were naked? The Lord God asked. Have you eaten from the tree, from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat? The man replied, It was the woman who gave me who gave me the fruit, and I ate it. Then the Lord God asked the woman, What have you done? The serpent deceived me, she replied. That's why I ate it. And so we have a different picture in our stories of origin. We have Adam and Eve reacting differently to one another and to God. We have Adam and Eve not listening to God. And the centre of their life being their own knowledge rather than God's. Isabel Hamley puts it in three different ways. She says, firstly, that the actions of people change from being a community to individuals. It was the man, it was the woman. And so we hear of the impact of the brokenness that people become more individualistic and separated not only from one another but from creation. We hear too that things change linked to creation around them. We hear of the difference between cooperation and hostility. Isabel Hamley calls this the abun from abundance to scarcity. And she says that moving from a place where there was God's goodness and God's abundance in the diversity of creation and in the amount of created things to a place where Adam and Eve were sent out to scarcity, this becomes a great threat. Survival does not depend on the community but individuals. Things are scarce. And she goes on to argue that because things have become scarce, we, many generations further down the line, are trapped in a place of exploiting the earth because we are fearful that we will not have enough. She talks about how the story through some of the rest of the Old Testament is about the prophets insisting that scarcity is never an excuse for exploitation. The vulnerable, the widow, the orphan and the poor are powerless. And it's their powerlessness and their vulnerability that matters the most. Because what they have is scarce, what they have is their dignity reduced, their humanity diminished. 
And so with a picture from changing from abundance to scarcity, she says the image changes from people living dignified in the image of God to people being put down. She also says that the land suffers, the whole of creation suffers. And the stories from Genesis speak about how creation suffers at the hands of humanity. And because humanity makes other humanity suffer, neighbours affect neighbours, and therefore the sins of the fathers are on the children. One example I'll show you is from Namibia. Namibia is often referred to as the driest country in the south of the Sahara Desert and is a home to a majority of people who depend on agriculture, fishing, forestry and conservation. Over half the population of Namibia live in rural areas with little access to electricity. And climate change, as we know, is accelerating the desertification of the land. Charles, an elderly man in a village on the edge of the desert, speaks to Isabel, saying this, I can remember when I was a boy, there were trees, and now it's sand and dust and nothing but brush. We need the trees for firewood, but there are none left. Wood is essential for small businesses and daily tasks, but fewer trees are growing. And for each tree that the community uses, the impact is much greater than it was when I was a boy. And so the community are left in a dilemma. If they keep using the trees, they contribute to the problem. But if they don't use the trees, their livelihoods are at risk. The suffering of the land and plenty turned into scarcity. Two questions for you to ponder. Which parts of the world do you know are suffering as a result of the way that land is used? And the second part of the question, how can we as humans act more justly for the whole world? Which part of the world do you know are suffering? And how can you act more justly And so, to turn to justice. 
justice at the beginning of our scriptures is about putting things right. The word that occurs again and again linked to justice in the Old Testament is hesed, steadfast loving kindness, compassion, mercy and love. Because nothing in the world belongs to us, all things come from God and to God we give in return. What is given to us is given on trust. And as Christians, we're called to hunger and thirst for justice. We're called to act justly with steadfast loving kindness, compassion, mercy and love. And so as we think of our themes this evening, we ask ourselves, how can we act more justly with compassion and mercy? How can we recognise that scarcity isn't a reason to exploit people for our own ends? How can we ask ourselves, sorry, we also ask ourselves how we can be celebrators of difference, recognising that everyone is made in the image of God and that we're all part of a community together. Compassion, mercy and love. Let us pray. Loving God, you created the world with such generosity and love. Help us to see as you see, with compassion and mercy. Help us to respect people as you do, as we're all made in your image. Help us to love our neighbours and your creation more deeply. Amen. As we pray Compline together, please do join in with the words in bold type. And uh, Julian will lead us in our canticle, so please do follow as you're able to. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Most merciful God, we confess to you before the whole company of heaven and one another that we have sinned in thought, word and deed and in what we have failed to do. Forgive us our sins, heal us by your Spirit 
and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit. Have mercy on me, O God, in your great goodness. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness. For I acknowledge my faults. Against you only have I sinned. So that you are justified in your sentence. I have been wicked even from my birth. Behold, you desire truth deep within me. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Make me hear of joy and gladness. Turn your face from my sins. Make me a clean heart, O God. Cast me not away from your presence. Give me again the joy of your salvation. Then shall I teach your ways to the wicked. Deliver me from my guilt, O God, the God of my salvation. O Lord, open my lips. For you desire no sacrifice, else I would give it. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit. O be favourable and gracious to Zion. Then you will accept sacrifices offered in righteousness, the burnt offerings and oblations. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit. Take away, good Lord, the sin that corrupts us. Give us the sorrow that heals and the joy that praises. And restore by grace your own image within us. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 34. The Lord passed before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for the thousandth generation, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin yet by no means clearing the guilty, but visiting the iniquity of the parents upon the children and the children's children to the third and the fourth generation. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, Lord God of truth, Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. We stand for the Gospel Canticle. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep may rest in peace. We pray together. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. Mine own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep may rest in peace. Please sit or kneel as we pray. Creator God, you imbued the world with your generosity and abundance. We pray that you would open our eyes to see you at work. Open our hearts to receive your gifts, including the gift of one another. Open our hands, that we may play our part in tending your creation, in working for justice and redressing the wrongs that hurt your world and its people. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus Christ, you came to proclaim good news to the poor, to the prisoners and to the sick. We call to mind those parts of the world that we know live the daily realities of scarcity and poverty. We pray for those in prison, either imprisoned in this country 
or for acts of conscience in Russia and throughout the world. And we pray for those whom we know are sick in body, mind or spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, we pray that you would free us from the need to compete, to hoard resources, or to diminish others. And this night we pray, especially for the people's in Ukraine and Russia, diminished by war. We ask that you would heal wounds of the past and wounds of the present. Lord Jesus Christ, bless all peacemakers and those serving you in positions of power. Lord, in your mercy. Spirit of all truth, we pray that you would reveal to us the truth of our lives, the beauty and the brokenness. We ask for your grace in our thoughts and deeds that we may love you and our neighbour with the fullness of your love. Lord, in your mercy. Holy God, our lives are laid open before you. Rescue us from the chaos of sin. And through the death of your Son, bring us healing and make us whole in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace we will lie down and sleep. Abide with us, Lord Jesus. As the night watch looks for the morning, restore us again, O God of hosts. Show us the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Bless and keep us this night and always. Amen. Amen.